In the last tutorial, we placed our um, callouts as well as a couple little graphic elements that we did. And we did the end symbol for our article. And the last thing we need to do is just check over the article one last time before we package it up and print out our PDFs. Now, um, a couple things just to be aware that you can do. Look for places where you can align objects together better. For example, if you can see if I have these two selected, um, this line is actually a little bit above the bottom line of that particular block. If you click on it, now I'm going to drag over to the left-hand side, and you'll see that it will automatically align with that. And if I'm really precise in doing this, now I've just moved that bottom line down just enough to make that look a little bit better. Now, any other tweaks that you want to make, of course, are up to you um, when it comes to visual tweaks. But another one that I'm looking for are what are called um, orphans and widows. And I know I have one that I saw. Oh, I think it's on this page. Yeah, here. This is a little bit funny. Anytime you have something, it's not perfect here because it's a URL. But anytime you have just a few words or just a single word, um, a few characters rather, or a single word on a line by itself, that's an orphan or a widow. And I'm going to select that text all the way back to there and just kern it just a little bit tighter. Now we can track that and just go with numbers, or if you hold down the Alt key and hit the left arrow, you'll see if I get it to negative 45, then I can get those all in one line. And that certainly looks just a little bit better. But notice how it will screw up other things. This is just what happens when you start working with design. Now we can try and move things around by maybe making this a little bit taller, making it less, moving it, you know, left up or down just a little bit might make a dis might make a difference about the way it works. So you can see just by moving it slightly, I was able to fix that other issue that was created. So you just have to go through your document and just make sure that everything is aligned. I also noticed that, whoops, somehow I got over that edge, just the tiniest amount. So I might actually go back to that, double click. I'm going to take this back to that edge. There we go. Whoop, it looks like I have a black background. So I'm going to take that black background out, and that should be fixed. So there are always little visual tweaks that you need to do at the end document. So I definitely would suggest that you take the time and do that now. After that, we're going to save this document. And let's go into package. The reason what we use package is this allows us to save all of our files, all the links that we have, and all the, all the images, all the um, fonts and everything else that are needed for this project to be able to send it to a printer. So um, the one thing that you do want to be aware of is if you have anything that says that you have modified or missing links, then you definitely want to fix those, especially the missing links, before you hit package. When you package, you'll come up with the ability to have an instructions file, and I'd leave that just as it is, instructions.txt. But put your name and contact information in I just a little bit of stuff and you could have an instructions it says you know please print all pantone colors as cmyk you can put instructions for the printer um, anything that you need there and let's hit continue and now what i need to do is find a folder to put this in and so i'm going to go ahead and use the folder that i got right there and click ok what this warning tells us is that you're about to copy fonts and you want to make sure that you have licenses for those fonts. Once you've made that, then you'll notice if we go back to that folder, it made a new folder for us. I don't have a perfect name there, but that's okay. And if I go inside, you'll see that it has um, an IDML file, which is an exchange file that goes between multiple versions of InDesign. We have the InDesign file that we just created, and it automatically created a PDF for us as well. And then it has the fonts that were used in this project, and it has the links that were used. And you'll notice that the links are only the links that are in our project, not all of the links that we might have downloaded as a part of the files that we might have used. Now, when it comes to this PDF, I want you to be aware that the PDF that's here may not be exactly the settings that we want. So I'm actually going to delete this PDF so that I can make my own PDFs. And I'm going to make two different versions, one that's made for the web and the other one that's made for print. The first one I want to do is the web version. 
So I'm going to go up to Adobe PDF presets and I'm going to use the smallest file size. And I'm going to save it in that folder and I'm going to call this the web version. Now, for the web version, there's a couple things that are going to be important. I'm going to use just pages to begin with and um, I'm going to go ahead and see this afterwards. And I'm also going to include hyperlinks. And this is really nice because those hyperlinks that we put into the document can now actually work as real um, hyperlinks. And those are the only changes that we need to make. And so I can now export that. And it says that there's a transparency issue, but not a big deal. Now you'll see we have an individual page for each page. And we actually have a workable hyperlink for those. And that's really cool. There's the other workable hyperlink. So I really like um, being able to use hyperlinks in web versions of PDFs. I think that's kind of neat. And the last PDF that we need to make is if we go to a PDF presets, we'll go to high quality print. And this is going to be the print version. Now with this print version, I'm going to go over to marks and bleeds, turn on all printers marks and use bleed um, settings. And I forgot one thing, and that was over in the general, I definitely want spreads as well. So we want spreads and we want marks and all printers marks and bleeds. Now, just looking at color, we're not gonna do any color conversion here at all. But one thing that you could possibly do, if I go into the ink manager, you'll see that we've got a number of different inks that are used here because we have Pantone colors. And I can set all of those Pantone colors if I go to each one, I can say all spots will go to process. Actually, I don't even have to click on each one individually. I just say all spots go to process. This way, I don't have to worry about those Pantone colors in this document. And the printer won't see those either if they go to this EPS. Now let's click export. And hopefully you have now generated a new one that has spreads. And it has all of our crop marks and everything in that file. And here we get to the top. You'll see there you can see the crop marks and the, the bleed marks as well and all the other pertinent information that we would need on that file. And we don't have hyperlinks that work anymore. And that would be the press version of this or print version of this PDF. Now to give you a good idea about how to use um, InDesign throughout all of these different tutorials, um, once again, there's always little tweaks that I see like you see see where it says head of a sunflower and community of I might go ahead and change those by putting a, a small break there and of course if we did make a break then we'd have to go and fix everything it'd be a real pain but or we'd have to output all of our PDFs so you really want to make sure that you go through with a fine tooth comb and check all the things that you're looking for um, to clean up your document before you get to the to the printing stage and um, outputting your PDF um, and your um, package for your printer. Once everything's done, you can go ahead and save your document again, and you are done with that project. Congratulations.